Great. So um, we have a great panel here um, with a bunch of companies that are all um, looking in different ways at this question of you know, cloud and security um, related to mobile. And I think, to me, there's one trend that sort of um, impacts both of these topics pretty heavily. And it's the fact that amid all this mobile growth, um, the way that businesses get the devices has really changed. So once upon a time, businesses bought Blackberries for a small percentage of their workforce that they could really justify it for. Maybe a little Windows Mobile, maybe a little Palm in there. Um, but it was pretty limited. Um, nowadays, most of a lot of companies have these mobile devices, um, but their employees have paid for them. And so IT is in a different role, figuring out how to support it. Um, and so the question um, that I asked uh, all the panelists to think a little bit about as kind of a meta question, um, and I'm going to ask each of them to talk about it in, uh, by way of introduction, um, is how much, if an employer doesn't uh, pay for these devices, how much can they expect in terms of security and manageability? Um, I'll leave it there, and I'm curious each of your take. And you can introduce yourself and maybe say two sentences about what you do, but we have a short <laughs> time, so. I'll start. Um, I'm uh, Alex, I work at Enterprise, um, but perhaps uh, more significantly for the 10 years prior to that, I worked at Morgan Stanley. Morgan Stanley is, well, Goldman Sachs is a preeminent investment bank. Morgan Stanley is a software house pretending to be an investment bank. Hmm. Um, so we were nerds on the buy side running mobility there. And we saw this transition as you were talking about. I mean, obviously the transition started with company cars, it went to personal cars, you expense back your mileage. We saw it with laptops, everyone gave out the Lenovo's. I beg your pardon. And then uh, everyone gave out the laptops and now you sort of just VPN using your Mac. Um, and the same is obviously true now of mobile. And you talk about security and how important it is for the company, the enterprise to manage it. But actually I think security is equally important to the individual. And it's the protection of their freedom uh, and their privacy. So to log into my bank account these days, I've got my company bank account, I've got my personal bank account. Actually, my RSA uh, FOB is more complex for my personal bank account than it is my corporate bank account. So I think it's companies like Box and Lookout and so on and so forth that are providing these perhaps consumer-based services that are much more advanced and innovative uh, than their enterprise uh, counterparts. Um, so, you know, in answer to your question, uh, it's absolutely fantastic that people are using these, these personal liable uh, devices. Uh, in doing so, the companies are absolutely encouraging of it. There's less of a support burden. Uh, people are much more inclined to manage and govern their own security. Uh, and so when it comes to the enterprise, uh, do not uh, rely on them to troubleshoot and so on and so forth, because they're much more used to it themselves. And um, it's a wonderful trend and, and very encouraging and incredibly productive uh, for the enterprises. Thanks, Alex. Dan? I'm Dan Levin from Box. And, you know, I think it really boils down to three things. Uh, and I have seven devices, and I just grab one when I walk out the door, and I don't care which device I have because uh, everything from access to my Salesforce.com data to my content is available to me through the cloud, right? But my company, I think, feels the need to have three things guaranteed. One is that there's some reasonable model of identity management so that I'm mapped onto the device in some secure way. Uh, the other that, just as we do with our laptops, there'd be some malware prevention mechanism so that uh, we know that my device hasn't been taken over by somebody else or uh, my keys aren't being uh, spied by somebody else. And third, that if the device gets left in uh, razzmatazz last night at the Google party, it's okay, right? So the data needs to be encrypted on the device so that the device is not uh, accessible to some third party if they walk away with it. And we need some remote control capability to get rid of the uh, mission critical stuff that might be stored on the device even though it is encrypted. I think if you got those three pieces, you're in pretty good shape. Yeah, I'm Jeff uh, Haney from Accelerator. I kind of represent more of the developer viewpoint. Um, we enable developers to build applications and mobile web content. You know, IT is always, security is kind of the last main thing that, that IT has to basically control uh, what it does and, and be relevant in, in a lot of cases. And, Security is a very important problem. I think the, you know, like we said before, I mean, the app problem with security 
bring your own device is the predominant way that it seems like that all companies are moving towards. It's, it's a trend that's been happening quite a while, and I think the cloud will only continue to accelerate that. Um, but I believe in the app world, there's actually a lot more opportunities for enhanced security. Um, there's, it's much easier to multi-factor authentication. It's much easier to actually have encryption, device encryption, lots of things. And we're already seeing this by companies even being represented like Box that are already doing way more higher grade security in some cases than most enterprises do. Of course, they use the veil of security as a control mechanism, but in, but in fact, they're, they're actually pretty lackadaisical when it comes to security. So I think it's a good opportunity, I believe, for companies to actually rethink about security in the app model and actually create a, a, a nice thing. There's lots of different models that are being, we're seeing lots of different models here actually at the conference, but virtualizing devices, sort of one end of the spectrum to creating secure <coughs> application containers and transports on the other end of the spectrum. I think that's a good thing. Hi, I'm Chris Jones, I'm from Lookout. Uh, we do uh, apps that actually are much more on the consumer side. We protect uh, consumer smartphones. We're starting to find ourselves pulled more and more into the enterprise and definitely seeing you know, a lot of the trends that we're talking about here. Uh, I think I pretty much agree with everything that the panelists have said here. A couple of things I'll add is uh, you know, the bring your own device. That certainly has been where the consumerization side started. I actually don't think it's, it's uh, the, the main driver now, you know, people wanting to bring their own device in. I think it's actually become just part and parcel of what people expect uh, in terms of uh, you know, being able to access not only you know, personal services, but also the, the services that the enterprises themselves are, are, uh, are providing. And then the, uh, the other thing I'd add um, you know, to, to what everybody else is saying up here is you know, security has always been a defense in depth sort of thing. You've got to touch the network. You've got to, uh, you've got to deal with the apps, you've got to deal with the, uh, with the endpoints, uh, you've got to deal with the services themselves. I think probably in this type of environment where you're starting to see much more of these blended cloud mobile services, that the, the user themselves are actually becoming a lot more important in the security equation and the, uh, the, just the training and policy and, and, and actually knowledge you know, that, the, that the consumers need to have in order to, you know, to be secure in that environment. So. You guys have painted a pretty happy picture of all this, that there's a pretty natural overlap between what a consumer wants for their own privacy, security, and protection, and what the enterprise needs and wants. And I just want to do a quick reality check. How many people use, access some sort of business corporate resource from their mobile device? Almost everyone, almost everyone. How many people don't have a password on their phone. Well, that's pretty good, but you know, if you're a, a company, that's at least one of your employees, a couple is storing resources and not even having a password on their device. Um, how many people store business-related documents that their employer wouldn't be happy if, well, that's probably, how many people store business-related <laughs> documents in a personal service? And if you use Gmail, the answer is yes. So <laughs> I think the, the potential that you guys talk about is there. But what about this reality um, that these devices are mobile by definition? They're going all over the place. Uh, they're getting left in bars and taxis. And they've got, you know, in, in some cases, the corporate jewels. And they're not, they're not really being protected, even if they could be. So I think. In some respects, this is where the cloud helps in that some of this content is obviously not resident on the device. And that's why the services like Box are extremely helpful in this respect. But I think you know, you're, you know, it's all very well to talk about, well, the corporate data and corporate security and what do we do about you know, having this corporate data leakage on your device. But actually, there's another side to it. There's what do we do about the corporate insight into your personal information, into your text Great messages, point. into your personal phone calls, into what you browse, into what apps you download. And I think the trend has been so far about how the company cannot compromise their, their security of their data. But I think it's changing. I think we accept the BYD is here. I don't necessarily think it's a pull from the consumer. I think the enterprise is also very happy. It doesn't want to know, be liable for what the individual is getting up to. It's very happy to transfer that liability of cost onto the user in terms of the company should not pay for my phone calls to my mum. Uh, and by using my personal device, it doesn't have to. But really, I think what is an equally interesting question is you know, what, what information do people have or how cognizant are we of the insight our companies have into our own personal freedom 
uh, and behavior. And that's equally challenging. So I want to get back to that, because I think it's a fascinating question, Alex. But I also want to, want to get at the first question. I think it's a really good point. Now, we'll come back to that right next. I mean, I think it's just the reality of, of technical innovation that inevitably employees get out ahead of their IT organization. And that's clearly what's happening with mobility, right? Uh, the iPhone comes along just the same way that uh, so many innovations came along before, including the internet for those of us who are around in the mid-90s when our employers woke up one day and realized that we were all using the internet from work and you know, they didn't really sort of know what to do about that. I don't think they know what to do about the bring your own device to work trend either. But I think in five years they will. I mean, I spent a whole day with six security architects from a very, very large technology company. They flew, flew in from all over the world and we sat down around a table for a whole day and said, what's the world going to be like when this large company's IT organization doesn't provision devices for a living? Their employees provision devices. And, you know, they're going to figure this stuff out. There's going to be some reasonable mechanism for partitioning my personal life from my corporate life on my device. And, uh, you know, I, Box is the first place I've ever worked where I showed up on day one and there was everything I needed on my desk and among the things that there weren't was a phone, right? There's no landline at Box unless you're a salesperson. It just assumed that your mobile device, your personal mobile device, is the way you're gonna conduct business. And we pay for everybody's cell phone as a matter of course. That's the future. Your cell phone is gonna be a, a corporate, an element of your corporate infrastructure and, and we're gonna learn how to deal with that. But that, that, that is a challenge though, that the company, the Box does pay for the entire bill. Is that the case, it pays for your personal phone calls as well. It does. Yeah, so really what happens, this goes back to what you were talking about earlier in terms of who's paying for the data, be it the apps um, or uh, the individual. I think the company needs to pay for the corporate usage and the individual needs to pay for the individual personal usage and you need a means of separating that. So really? I mean, is the cell phone bill that, I mean, if, if I can afford a cell phone yeah. bill, surely my company. But we don't do that in the landline. We don't do that in the landline in a company. I mean, we make personal calls in a landline, and we don't do that, right? And voice is going to yeah, it's going know. to nil. So Morgan Stanley spent forty million dollars a year on voice and data. It needed to transition this liability onto the user, and that's what happens with bring your own device. It's a I significant mean, in, cost. In many ways, though, I think it's actually getting very difficult to distinguish between what is personal activity and what is corporate activity. Uh, you know, I'll just a, a very quick example. I use Facebook at work all the time, but I use it not personally, I use it actually as part of the hiring process. Yeah. I'm doing background on, on, uh, on candidates and things like that. So, you know, I think uh, it, it might be very difficult actually to get, certainly when it comes to payment, you know, that kind of segregation. And I would argue they're getting several hours of extra work out of all of us. Um, you know, I think most, you know, <laughs> the trade-off there. And again, most of us work at startups, so the, you know, the, the culture may be a little bit different there. But, it's, but I, I think that it's a harbinger of where you know, a lot of other trends are going. And you, you, and you need to be able to account for this as to, I mean, even from a, a tax standpoint, as to how much work your, your employees are doing over time. And this is managed by user experience. And I'm going to excuse the plug, but this is where a dual persona, this is where a sort of virtualized device, the, through your user experience, the ability very easily and readily to be able to identify when I'm working, and when I'm, when I'm playing. Mm. Yeah, I think that blend gets really hard. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa. The, the yeah, crowd I, doesn't I seem to like that idea. <laughs> and I, I think it's, I mean, do you, you know, we all say it's all, you know, I think the idea that at five o'clock our phone switches to off, mo you know, play, not off mode, but personal mode. And, you know, suddenly, you know, our work emails don't come through. I mean, is, is not, is not a reality that I think our employers, or really realistically, I mean, it's sort of fantasy land for me. I don't know how many people in the audience think that that's fantasy land. Not that we don't want to segregate. I, I, the part of your business that I think totally makes sense is, it's my device, but I have corporate data. It should be segregated. If I leave the company, you can wipe the enterprise piece of the data. That makes total sense, but I, the, the piece that I question, it sounds like the audience questions, is this idea that we're going to neatly be able to segregate our work and personal lives. I just think that ship has sailed. Well, just look at it in terms of, of, of phone numbers. I mean, do you really want all your corporate contacts having your personal phone number? 
So when you're on holiday, that you want them to call you. You want when you leave your job and go to another. You want to be able to pay. Have when you dial into that international conference call. When you roam, you want to use your personal number and your personal phone bill for that. Well, let's ask. How many people want two phone numbers so they can separate their work and personal? Yeah. <laughs> how many even, just yeah, want even, one number? Who, who actually actually dials people's numbers anymore? <laughs> I mean, it's identity, right? I mean. I think it's an identity thing, and it's hard to sort of, it's multi-personas multi that we have. We have many contexts that we work in, sometimes at the same time. And I think we're also moving away from a world where it's a single app and a single device, where it's multi-apps, multi-devices throughout the day. I mean, it, in the morning, I'm using my handheld. I'm driving to work. I'm going to eventually be doing apps in my car, and I'm using a television at night connected to the to the internet. I mean, it, it's going to be hard to distinguish between one or the other. And I use a Google Voice phone number, and the phone rings wherever I want it to ring. <laughs> well, I'd love to um, harass you guys more, and I will if the audience doesn't have questions, but I want to give them a chance as well. Yeah, there's a lot of containers. I mean, uh, Enterprise does that. Uh, you know, 3LM has a slightly different approach by Motorola. I, I think the idea of segregating the data um, and corporate companies being able to protect their data seems to make sense. I just question the divide. I, I'm curious what the rest of the panel well, thinks I mean, on this. Well, I mean, even that becomes hard. I mean, I think it, it, data is important as well, but I mean, even network services. I mean, we, we see applications that are business context applications that use Foursquare and Facebook in those applications. So is that a personal transaction or is that, you know, corporate? I mean, it, it starts to blend. I do believe that it, we're moving more towards an app security sandbox model and a connected VPN-like oriented model with certificates. Um, we announced a, 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 you know, a partnership with RSA yesterday to provide secure ID kind of containers in enterprise applications, sort of use multi-factor to wrap an application, right? So there's multiple levels, I think, of security. And it, it is a scary place out there. I mean, there's tons and tons of malware. The fact that Lookout actually has to exist is, is crazy to me that we actually have to have fucking virus scanning software on our <laughs> cell phones. I mean, I thought we were moving away from computing like that, right? Um, but, it, but, it, but it's a reality of technology and innovation. The quid pro quo is I don't have to pay for anybody's phone. I mean, yeah, I pay for their connectivity. Fine. That's relatively inexpensive. They're shelling out 400 bucks for the device. It's, it's not just a security uh, matter, though. It's also a regulatory and compliance matter. So there are large regulatory compliant organizations which cannot, as much as they may want to merge and oh, have sure. some sort of concept of permeability. In FinServe and Pharma, you've got big issues there. The, and the, healthcare the, broadly, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, and more questions or more? Okay, then I want to quickly, oh wait, sorry. Oh, sorry. The question is, do we pay for our employees' broadband connection from home, presumably? And the answer is yeah. Uh, in the UK, there's a big issue with government likes to tax benefits. And if you stop paying for phone bills, they don't want to start tax benefits. I mean, again, though, we're talking 50, 75, let's say $100 a month. And I don't think most people pay $100 for broadband. Even your less paid workers pay for that in just a couple hours of overtime. I don't think the workers getting the, 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 the plus end of the deal here. I, I pay more for my employees' gym membership than I do for their network connectivity right. in many well, cases. Well, we all should work for Box. They pay for gym membership, phones. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's awesome recruiting. And regulatory will always follow innovation, I mean, in, in, in any case. Well, I'd love to keep this going, but I, I think we are at time. I really want to thank you all for being good sports and uh, providing a bunch to chew on. Thank you very much, guys.